the ball. Hey, Huss. no. Unique fashion. Huss. Elam Road. Huss. Shout out to Huss. my boy E. Keep it going. Huss. This for you, boy. Huss. Boy, I got a unique Huss. I had to get it out the mud. I Huss. I ain't waiting no shit. I Huss. Check it, check it, check it, man. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy, ECEO. And I'm Money Most, by the way, and we create content every damn day. Check it, man. I, hey, man, I'm, I'm, hey, we got a guest today, man. You, hey, y'all need to get ready, man. Hey, I, I've been waiting on this minute to talk to this brother, man. It's been, it's a long history of things that I want to ask him, man. He, he, hey, man, this guy's a legend, man, in the, in the, in the rap game. Come on, man. Hey, when I first heard him, it was the early 90s, man. And and, and to be honest with you, the brother was bringing the pain then. And the, and the latest stuff I heard, he was still bringing it, man. It's your boy Young Bleed, man, in the building, man. What's going on, brother? Who that? What's good with your family? What's good with you? How y'all making? Man, man, every, every time. Hey, listen, man, every time I can, I be trying to get a hold to you, bro. I ain't going to lie, man. Ever since we talked the first time, we it was like, wow, man. I Hey. Everything you tell me, man, been enlightening, man. It's just a blessing to be able to talk with you, man. So we got we got uh, Monty Moses in the building. Yes, we also have the official Miss Jamaica in the building as well, man. And she uh, she yes. always got a lot of questions, man. She keep me in line because I be shooting from the hip, man, because I get excited yeah, about the rap. You, you know, we did mental health yesterday, but today is it, it's, uh, we in my lane today. Yesterday it was mental okay. health. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But hey, man, I just appreciate uh, you, man, for taking this, man. Taking this, taking this, this interview. What's man, up, man? Well, you know, like it go with us, you know, E. You know, you big bro to me, man. You know, it's a family affair. Shout out to Z. You know what I mean? And your brother Steve, man. You know, um, getting us all connected to be able to do here, do this. And shout out to Bo um, Boss Talk One on One. Man, you know what I mean? My it's man, Money, um, Money Moses. You know what I mean, Money and I'm uh, Mr. Maker, man. Yeah, Money Moses and Mr. Maker, man. So I appreciate y'all having me. Man, thank Thanks you for, for being here. There you go. There you go. So, so I, I always do. say, ladies first, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand it off to Miss Jamaica, man. She got some questions, and and I know she gonna hone me in on you. I mean, she got a book over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> say that then. All right. Okay. My yes, first sir. question for you would be how long have you been in this business and what inspired you to go down this path? Um, the industry, overall industry, um, 23, 24 years this year, celebrating the 23rd um, anniversary of um, my solo debut to the world. All I have in this world is my balls and my word, um, word um, debuted in 1998. But um, underground, ultimately, um, about 37 years. Wow. wow, that's extraordinary. Yeah, cool, you yes, started sir. at a young age. <clears throat> yeah, about nine years old in the fourth grade. Um, for me putting my pen to my pad, I probably was um freestyling a year prior to that. But I started to learn um learn to formulate my words somewhere around um 1983. Yeah, nine years old, fourth grade. Wow. I wasn't even born then. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got we, hey, we got a youngster mm. in the building. He, he got he, he he wasn't around, but he when he first he and guess what. Uh, I, both of y'all from Louisiana. No part okay, from. That's what? what's up, I'm from Monroe. <laughs> okay, look, I got a, I got some homies and family in Monroe, man. Um, shout out to my man, um, Big D from Big Way to Entertainment, man. You know he's doing the beard, working on his case. But um, his artist, um, Freeze from K Street. If you know anything about Freeze and K Street, I did um Freeze on um, debut record when he was um he was releasing him as a solo artist living in Dallas at the time. So um, it's a record that's available now on all the social media um, websites, but it's called Young Bleeding Freeze Off the Curve. But um, here again, shouts out to Monroe, Louisiana. A lot of people don't know that's the birthplace of Hewitt P. Newton, being today is February 1st, one man. Black History Month for the man. Black Panthers. But, that's what's up, man. Something special coming on. For this yeah, month. yeah, yeah, yeah. This month, this month right here, man. We, we, hey, we supposed to be setting an example this month when I think about it, man. man. We, we, hey, hey the man. One they give yeah, yeah, yeah. We we didn't have much to start with, man, but we making waves. Everybody don't like to be positive about our people, but I see a lot of hey. unity, man. It, it, it's some things that's united about us, and we need to acknowledge that. I believe, man. Uh, 
So, so let me ask you a question, man, because we gonna no, get. No, but into, he didn't answer oh, the second he didn't part. Finish. What was the second? I'm second sorry. Part of let the me step back. Was, so, who inspired you to to go down that wow. path? I'm sorry, I missed it. I tell everybody this, man. Uh, I'm born this way. I come from in one sense a uh, underground musical family. My mother read read me Dr. Seuss and the Embryo. My uncle played drums. They say rap is rhythm and poetry, R-A-P. So wow. by the time I was probably about eight months and born into the world, eight months to a year, I was reading the same Dr. Seuss. My mama was reading me while I was still in the inside. My mother damn near, you know, died the day I was born and she sacrificed her life in that sense. And uh, told that to the doctor that, you know, she had a complicated pregnancy. But long story short, she said, you know, let me live. And she, you know, she accepted her demise at 17 years old. Wow. But she read me that, that form of poetry uh, when I was still in, inside of her. And um, I had an uncle that played congas, bongas, you know, all kind of Africa, um, African um, eccentric instruments, but definitely the congas, bongas, and a, a real stick. So she said, you know, during the time of her, um, her pregnancy, he'll play the drums all the time and run her crazy because I kind of, move around a lot on the inside. Hey. Like I say, I'm going this way. I'm a seven this baby man. So, you know, rap became my way of life. So it go way back to that for me before I got into the world. So I personally feel like this is my mission. I can tell you about my granddaddy that was a blues man, played piano, so on and so forth. My, my other uncle and uh, my grandmother was president of the choir, you know, sweet home back to church, you know, just all South Baton Rouge, Louisiana. But I'm raised that way before I was 10 years old. I was in an opera, so everything of music genre was around me. If it wasn't for my uncles and, you know, other aunties that was playing records and different things that was in the house. And my granddad, you know, I, you know, I always come a blues baby. So I kind of took all that by the time I evolved into the um, early 80s and made that my own personal gumbo pot. So like That's I what I'm I was talking born. about. Yeah, man. Beautiful, man. So, so, uh, you you got another one you want to no, shoot? Go at? ahead. You had well. One. I was just I, I really you know me. I'm more into, I'm, I'm on this music thing, man. I be you know because I'm hip hop, you know. So yeah, when man. you when you when you look at me, I'm hip hop. I was born into it. I remember when it wasn't no hip hop. That telling my age a little right. bit. I remember when hip hop right. came on the scene. So when you when you've been yeah. dealing with it like that, it's sentimental to you. You know, and and yeah, I cool. remember when you hit the scene, and one of the things I always often wonder about guys like you that been in the game so long. I guess I'll throw this at you: how how many record labels would you say that you've had to deal with over the years? Oh man, deal with maybe a good ten minimum, twenty max. You remember your first one? From, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um. Record overall label when I I put my first I used to sell tapes on the corner. So I started off with a production company first my um you know, um looking at my first print printed record and uh, a, a tape that we used to sell, you know, in the corner stores and yeah, yeah, yeah. out of the stores like early nineties, ninety ninety one, somewhere like that. Then of course I went on to C Lo records and we started doing independent records, moms and pop stores. So starting from a real small scale, fifteen to sixteen years old. Anywhere between a 10, 20 in the middle, if 30 companies just going in and out, just, you know, different um, transitions and situations, man. So, yeah, I never really personally counted it out, but anywhere between that 10 and 30 frame, man. Yeah, I just always know that you guys, y'all, because most of the time when you look at the the hip hop industry, most of the time you guys be knowing each other. It's it's crazy to me how organic it is because all of y'all have this chemistry with the music, and then and the people who are trying to get everybody signed or trying to get people to 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 promote, you know what they're doing, it kind of locks y'all yeah. all into each other. So every time I would meet okay. certain ones, it'd be like, oh, yeah, he's like, yeah, I know him or I know him, you know, because I've met a lot of yeah. people, and they always yeah. somehow know each other some kind of way or know about right. each other through somebody they work with. Right. When you say that, E, it really uh, make me recap my statement. Because when you say that independently and raw, yes. independently, yes. everybody you meet that's a rapper, that's a CEO, yeah. from the underground up, yeah. maybe anywhere from 100 to 1,000. Now you see where I'm coming from? Because it really throws you off when you when you think yeah. about it. You know, yeah, I, sir. I, I, I just, bleed. Absolutely. Okay. Hey, what mm-hmm. did you learn from these record companies? Um, <laughs> how to set up my own, you know, just like working in a job, whether it's the dudes and the dude not. You know, what's successful and what just didn't work for the next guy. And it's on, you know, us to each one, teach one, 
You know what I mean? And it's just like uh, Einstein to Nikola Tesla, whoever you want to name from a scientific um, standpoint, it's trial and error. So, you know, um, not saying that to downplay nobody at the end of the day, but you learn, you know what I mean? The ins and outs, the <clears throat> against the do's and the do not. So, you know, I run a label nowadays, but, you know, I foresaw running a label since I was about nine years old. But like they told me when I come in the game, the game is 90% business, 10% talent. And I had to grow into that. Yeah, day. yeah. And so would you, uh, uh, if, if a young artist coming to you right now, would you help him and show him the game and how to get in it by the business way? Uh, at, like I say, I, I've been running a label on um, and labels for years, you know, this is like my third label. The first one never went to print criminal records. The second label was Detention Home. But this third label, Trapdo Entertainment, I incorporated myself somewhere like 2009, 2010. So right now I have about 25 artists. So that's just what I do. Man, you that's know, a, that, so you 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 play. doing it. You doing it now. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, you that's know, um, we've we been dropping records since November 6th. And um, I pledge for a new artist and blessed to have on. Um, and um, we, we wait for a re release date of uh, artists that just put out by the name of Zam Two Turn Man out of the East St. Louis area. So I go around ghetto to ghetto, suburb to suburb. If I see something here, something I like, and we can do some business, you know, I don't have to pick and choose. So, and a lot of people grasp on um, to me for the legendary status and just being situated with a plateau to get your voice out. So I'm a born artist person, so I fight for the artist into the corporation, man. So yeah, that's the story of my life. Yeah, let, let me ask you this. What, who, which, which, uh, OG, cause we call them OGs, you know, I, I, it, who inspired you the most far as in, in the rap game, you know, industry? Um, I always say this, Rakim always been my favorite rapper of all time, but it's the era before Rakim. So my list, when people ask me to narrow it down to a top three, top five. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We go, whoa, whoa, you can't do that yet. You can't do that. No, no, no. Don't tell me the top three yet, because I got a whole segment I got to do with you on top three. I got to ask that question. So if we want to do it now, we can. So give me the top. Okay. Here where I'm going. Okay. I can never, I can never do that, because I got more than a favorite three rappers. Okay. Ten rappers. Then if you separate them in eras from the seventies into the eighties into the nineties, um, to the early two thousand, what's popping now? You know, it's you know, um, music is the universal language. You know, what I mean, we always speak it in different terms and terminology. So it's always innovating. It's always something new. So I can go back to the seventies and talk about Busy B, the Curtis Blow, Cool Mo D. And them guys, then I can get into LL, Rock Them, Daddy Kane. But it might Karras, be. Boom. Is it just rap though? Because you you could have a, a a thing for like soul or because where we come from, oh, yeah. we came from a different era to where we can reach back and say, you know what? It might be Marvin Gaye. We don't know. Oh, look, you say that. Don't get me started. I go back <laughs> for it. Like, um, you know, and, and believe it or not, I listen to um, Beethoven, Bach, and That's just up, a man. music kind of sure. But I love the blues and Robert Johnson, 30 music, 30 music, Jimi Hendrix, Pink Floyd. So with me, it's an infinite tree to pick from. So I could never put So you could never give me three category. artists. Are you serious? Not Young Bleed, not three. Give Man. me top three artists of all time. I've been struggling with that. And you knew I was going to ask it, man. That's what I always ask on every interview. I'm going to put this segment up any way you slice it and dice it because I got I to gotta acknowledge that it happened. Look, the thing is, man, I never met Rock Kim. I've been on, um, that's been my life and, and destiny in one sense uh, to reach out to him. I know a few people on the in between. We have so Rock Kim is your person. number one. Rock Kim is your number one. You done named him pretty tough. Well, look, here where I'm going. This is just being a fan to, to the music and student to the game. But in real life, hand to hand, heart to heart, man to man, boots on the turf, Sebo. Hey, yeah, saying? yeah, so we, yeah. We connected on some real life big brother, little brother shit, you know what I okay, mean? Okay, I like Sebo, um, man. Yeah, he lived in Dallas. When I lived in Dallas, about seven minutes apart. So I got a lot of time to spend with him, and he helped me out in a dire time in my life and career. So I ultimately respect that. So in one sense, So slash, that's Rock him and Sebo. Yeah, yeah, in real life. And okay. just when it wouldn't mean survival and that different other than being a student and a fan to the game and me just listening to rappers and saying, who's my favorite rapper? But him being a rapper, a real big brother to me, and just a person of the cloth from that business that was OG before me, 
that taught me a lot of more independent game between Texas to California. You know what I mean? It's a whole nother dynamic. So like I said, I got my reasons for like an LA or Daddy Kane, MC Light, before we even get into the female genre. Man, MC I Light was a beast, time. man. Yeah, Did you meet her? You you down. ever meet MC Light? I hadn't met Light, uh, Light, but um, I'm real cool with Sugar T, Boss. Okay, Tom, yeah, you know, yeah. Tom, Tom, so you know, for me, it's like um, when Pimp C say, "Put y'all records on one side and so on." Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's a tiny but bigger dynamic to where rap is not just one genre of music no more. You got everything from gangster rap to Christian rap. Okay. So when you narrow that down, that's just rap. And when you talk a music kind of store, yeah, I can't. Put well, it let me ask music. you this, cause you just said something, man. Pimp C, man, yeah. did did you get to meet? Cause yeah. I, that's, that, hey, man, that's one of my top. The, I mean, of all times for me, and I know everybody, I be getting upset with people up here about, about Pimp C. When you don't mention him in the top oh, three, okay. I be like, what? You know, but but let me let me give me give me something on Pimp C because I know you did you you met him. Oh, that was my brother, man. I cried a thousand tears, man. I said at the end about alive and living. Mama West, I met mom, pop, the two sons, Corey, and um, you know, young Chad. So I had the privilege. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, and I'm gonna say this for the record. Pimp C really from Crowley, Louisiana. Okay, I didn't you even know, know that. See, I'm getting, I'm getting, yeah, I'm getting diamonds yeah. out of this thing. What? Crow, that's where yeah. he was born. Yeah, it's an interview he said before his demise. I, I, you know, I'll send you the link um later when I find it again. E, but what he tell everybody, he's from Crowley, Louisiana, before PA, then in the H town. So I was a guy. Crowley is probably about a couple hours from Baton Rouge. Man. But when I was coming up and Flights and tapes, what we used to call it in the house with a two, um, a, a double cassette deck. If you had one turntable and if you was one of what I call a back room boy and was formulating hip hop and definitely anyway, but definitely in the Southern way, um, I was sampling records like the Isaac Brothers. One day you're here, one day you're gone. And I had records that I never put out. Man. It was published before I was. Okay, so we was on that wavelength is my whole point. So I have old men, 63 years old, between that and quality, to say, man, do you know Chad? You got to meet Chad. Now, Max Manelli from the concentration camp name is Chad, too. And one of his favorite rappers of all time was Pimp C. Pimp and Bond coming in the world of UGK, and, you know, Pimp never put out a solo record, you know, till his death. But um, it's a funny journey. I, I used to go through Crowley on that other note. You know what Already, I'm saying? Already, man. man. And never met Pimp and Crowley. But once he started to catch on to what was going on, I get different messages. If I was in Lake Charles or uh, uh, Lafayette, and they was in Lake Charles, they'll send for me down the road. But it'll be years later for we are meeting a physical farm for our meet mom, and we start negotiating deals, and we met each other. It was a, a match made in Man. heaven. And that's the only record that we have to date. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold, hold what you got. Hold what you got. Move over to the right a little bit. Yes. Move over to the right. There okay. you go, right there. Now we good. Now go ahead. All right, so check it out. So the only record we'll have, we had planned a lot of things. If Pimp was alive, I'd be on UGK Records and shout out to the whole family. All of us is cool. But you tripped me out when you said you're from Crowley. I mean, I never heard that before. Have, any, have you ever heard that? Yeah. Ask anybody from Texas, anybody that know Pimp C for real. Yeah. New Mama yeah. West and all them, they're from Crowley, Louisiana. I knew the. The sheriff of Crowley and me and his son run together. How deep I was in That's Crowley. That's what's up, man. I, I, I have that... old men to say, you got to meet him from Baton Rouge, that new pimp, before we was known like this on these rucks. Yeah, yeah. Different times. So it'll be years. I'm a baby to him and Bond. Um, really, I found out, man, pimp is about six months apart. I think pimp born in December, 73, and I'm born 74 June. So really six months apart. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. You know, different things you learn when you meet people. And we just had that brotherly love for each other and had some plans. You see what I'm saying? Damn, man. The two other guys, when he come home, I knew Pimp for the penitentiary time. Then when he came home and he started UGK Ruckers, Wool Wheel Ruckers. So we was planning on doing some things. And unfortunately, I don't think he lived a year when he come home from the penitentiary, maybe six or seven months. Yeah, yeah, I remember, months. man. Yeah, I remember. I was, I was, hey, I was anticipating the wait when he got out the tarot unit. 
I, I'm a I, hey man, I'm watching everything, man, because I know I know the system. So I'm like, okay, my boy at home. I know he still might be dealing with a little paper. You know, he might still be yeah. having having to deal with a little paper, but he can go to Cali every now and then do something. And I just thought it was gonna be so much more. I had big big expectations when he came home. At least ten years, he, you know that 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 slap is all with a left hook from the blind side. But look, Santa had to say this: the only public record that the world don't know about unless you read the credits on Balls in My Word. That's the Pimp C and a Young Bleed record. And really was for the 504 Boys or Mystical or somebody. And I ended up with the record doing the third verse. It's on here again. Um, all I have in this world, my Balls in My Word, my debut solo to the, the world is Brighton the Noise. Pimp C produced that track. So all that's right. the only Pimp I have in life, man. So rest in peace to my brother Chad. Yes, man. sir. Long time. Heritage, yeah, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate it, man. Um, I think you. Want, I'm gonna give. I'm, I'm gonna give it back to you. The official Miss Jamaica got a question. I can tell. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, my next question is: I know you have an upcoming album coming out. You said in February. Tell us a little bit yeah, about it. Um, it's really coming out for prequel album. I did November six, two thousand. Um, twenty on uh, twenty. Um. I always kind of pre see or predestined what I'm going to do next, the next years to come, along with the label and the artists and whatever they're doing. But I did a record in the end part of the year. That's, um, it's called. But, um, the end part of the year, um, in November, that was called, um, Science and Wonder, based mm -hmm. on the time, the pandemic and everything, you know what I mean? So on and so forth, the election. And I wanted to go in a revelistic kind of turn and feeling like, you know, the cold, like the new black plague, maybe this is the last day and all that. And I wanted yeah. to speak on that. Shots out to my man, Chuck at Work Clothes and um, Grind Music and Chop at, um, at Chop Recording, Top Shop Recordings out there in Indiana. Um, and they shot me an idea about doing an EP. So we did about seven songs we called Signs and Wonders. That's actually a prequel going into this album that you mentioned it called Dare is a God. So I watched, you know, slightly the news and what was going on all the way up into the situation in the Capitol. And the one thing I felt we was lacking, and, and uh, I don't want to go for saying disrespect, but however you look at it, each his own, um, was, was missing God. It's a few people that I heard mention God. You know, shout out to the, um, the the guy that won in Georgia, um, the black guy that was a reverend. Yeah. So I felt like despite of all the scientists and rocket scientists that's putting their head together, we don't know where this disease comes from. Uh, you know, uh, I'm saying disease, but but the COVID, the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, maybe some people do. But at the end of the day, you know what I mean? It kind of re re related me and reminded me a lot of, if you read the 20th chapter of Revelation, they kind of go with the time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Good. You know and that's a good book exactly. to reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. exactly. And when we talk about 2021, the 21st start, a new Jerusalem and so on and so far. And they kind of reminded me a lot of that. So I wanted to reflect back into my essence, the whole spiritual side of me, and kind of give that reverence to God. So coming off the um, prequel, Signs and Wonders, yes, um, I don't have a for sure date yet. I'm still in the studio with the record, but yeah, y'all get ready for there is a God. Really, if you, you break down the letters the way I'm spelling this, like D I G, like D, like I get it. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. There is, is a, a God, like man. Plaza is a God, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, and who are some of the collaborations you, you have with on that new album? Um, right now, um, a few underground, up and coming artists. Um, by the way, Chicago. New Orleans, um, Free C Murder, Free Mac, Free BG for that matter. For sure. But man. um, the guy Shout that out to like, um, yes sir. But um, like one of C's main guys, man. Shouts out to my brother Cup Boy G De Niro, um, by way of New Orleans, but out in the um ATL area, he's um the producer for a song and perhaps the first single that I'm finna release called "In the Eyes of God" that features him, you know, rapping on it as well as producing the beat to my my um. My brother, that nigga Twan out there, man, and uh, some wild 100s out there in Chicago, man. But we came together, and rest in peace to my man uh, and brother um, Glennis Martin, man. If y'all remember the group Seven Mile for out of Detroit years ago, you know what I mean? When Troop and all those kind of boy groups was out on the black hand side. Um, one or maybe a couple of records, man. I lived, you know, I lived in the Detroit um, and Lansing area for a little while, and I had a chance to meet this brother. 
that became a real brother in the same way with me in real life. And as we did this record on the and I asked the guard record, he passed, you know, of cancer a couple of years ago. Wow, out there man, in Atlanta. that's tough. Yeah. Yeah, so when you hear the record, it's real, you know, epic and classic in that sense. Almost. And what he's saying on the hook. <laughs> Time you come. We ready? Yeah. All right, now we back, man. Young bleeds in the building, man. Hey, man. Hey, hey. I want. I want to ask her, but I know she she wanted to hear a little bit more about the artists you had uh, featured on this new album. Um, is, and what date is it coming out? He said he's not sure. Um, I don't have a for show date yet. I'm still in the studio with it, and uh, I'm still juggling in my head. Really, you know, my template is laid out. I'm doing like about 13 songs unless my cup runneth over. Okay. But um, it might be some surprise guests. Um, <laughs> for the first time, my mama been on me about this for life. Hey, do a record with no cussing. So when I say there is a God, I ain't going to play with him at all. So I'm not cussing for the first time on the record. And I barely do that throughout my history. And I, I speak Christism um, in a ghetto gospel kind of way. So I got some ideas. But it's a slight chance that other than the two guys that I made the record with and rest in peace of my man, we really started that one song two, three years prior to what's happening now. So this kind of evolved. I had a template of why I wanted to lay out my next three to five records. But when this pandemic and all that came, that's the spirit shift I had. And I felt like that was the time. So I crafted together 13 solo joints. Well, 12 other than the inner eyes of God that featured those two guys. So it's a slight chance it just might be, you know, shout out to my big brother Brad. I hear he getting better on uh, talking about Scarface. Yeah, 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 Brad. Time. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. heard I heard that too. I heard he was getting better. Um, I wanted to, let, let, yeah. me, let me get all the way into it, man, because I know a lot of people, they know that you. you boy, go ahead. Eat, go ahead. Um, my whole reason for mentioning Brad was um, Brad sent a message to me a long time ago, and we met a couple of times and real fond of each other. But he always told me to do a record with just me by myself in the yeah. right production. So I got some nice music this time, and I feel like I didn't, you know, grew from a boy to a man in that spiritual essence. Yeah. And the world hit it, and I toot my own horn. So I'm really on the same me vibe. But with that direction of God and the Christ-like way, you know what I mean? Yeah, I want to I wanted kind of spin things a little bit into, you know, that mega hit, that song that, that pretty much changed a lot of people's life, man. Uh, that yeah. one that, that everybody was partying on uh, and, and, and just kind of talk around that how you do that there. That song that, yeah. you, that, that you've done, how you do that there. I want to just yeah. know how, how you, what made you come up with that uh, Cause I know you told me a little bit about it, but just tell, give us a history and rundown on it. And I and, and, I, and I know uh, I got some questions I want to ask about it. Okay, well for me it's all you know spirit first. You know what I mean, mind, body, and soul. But um, in my uh, brain child and, and, and um, psychic, I kept hearing the groove, hearing a certain pattern of drums, and all that type of things. And I presented that um. Uh, to my friend and family, um, Happy Perez, man. You know what I mean? That's the H Town producer, but was living in Louisiana. Okay. Um, you know, when he was um a young younger kid in high school, man. Shouts out to Max Manella and Jay Vaughn. They had a group called Lalo together. Mm-hmm. And um those um at least half was a little bit more um computer intelligent in that sense. Yeah, you know, I can go as far as saying that in that time, as far as programming and different things like that. So I had this beat that was playing in my head, kind of like hustling and flow <laughs> over and over. Yeah. And it was a song like that, that sometimes you're too tired to wake up and write it, you're too, too busy to do something, and it wouldn't leave me alone. So eventually I presented that to him, and we started to craft on um, the ideas I had for that song together. So I give him either producer or co-producer or vice versa before it was turned over to Beats by the Pound and um, re-digitally and enhanced in that sense from the concentration camp that um, no limit. So, but really, um, you know, intellectual property, you know, God idea and thought theory before it came to me. Yeah. Just giving you the whole essence of it. And it was just something that we worked with, man, that I had a good vibe and a good feeling about. And I knew it was going to be a good record, but how good, how long, and how big. It, it went no big. Let me ask you this. Did you, was that the first uh, work of art that you heard on the radio? Or had you heard numerous um, of songs no. before that? 
um, really, I had a record on the radio probably about 16, 17 years old when I was selling tapes on the corner in my neighborhood before the world of no. What was the name well, of that one? Um, it was called Much Love. It was a bar so that was the first one. Much yeah. Love. And um, our FM radio in Baton Rouge, you know, it was like number one at the station. They played it three, four times a day. And, you know, and, and amongst other things that led into talent shows and all that type of thing in our old head between our FM and AM radio station. But that was a town favorite when I was still in the hood and, and, and here again doing talent shows and things of that sort and that nature. But my biggest record to this um, to, to date is that's like my Michael Jackson thriller, like how you do that. Yeah, yeah, then how yeah. you do that there. When you came up yeah. with them lyrics, man, when you came in and said, who that? Yeah, yeah. The right. way that song started out, you know, you started that thing, man. And I didn't, the, the, that was the remix that Master P had done, right? Absolutely. And you know your history, man, when you say that. I wanted to signify Louisiana. A lot of people tell you where we from is really a Southern Jaguar term. That was really who that, that some kind of Okay, way I, I get it. I, you know yeah, about that. Now that. <laughs> yeah, look, a lot of people don't know this too, E. You know, Baton Rouge used to be 504 and New Orleans used to be the 225. And they switched the dynamic somewhere down the line okay. between the late 70s to the 80s. So maybe that's a true statement. I don't know where it originated from. Okay. The who that term, but I wanted something that signified us, Louisiana. Man, as you a did whole. that, man. Yeah, you know what, what I mean. I tripped out because after it was all, you know, like years later, and you hear a, a Ricky Smiley when he come out to it in his comedy skits, and, and I'm like, I'm man. I, I so so when you first uh, okay, let let me go back. I don't want to get into that yet. Uh, so yes. how did how did Master P ended up being on the remix, and how did you end up? Did you sign to No Limit? Uh, well, the truth is, you know, the beauty of networking between Baton Rouge and New Orleans at the least 45 minutes apart. Yeah, I've been down through there. You know, being a, a CEO of the company, C Lo Records, and Master P being the um, CEO of No Limit. Um, shout out to so many camps. When you oh, man, y'all had a whole bunch of people down there getting it in at that time. Getting it in, yeah, from an independent standpoint. Yeah, yeah. But P P having the overall access at the time was the right time and place for us. So naturally we was networking between camps and that, that type of thing. And when we got ready to do our first um, self-titled comp um, compilation, concentration camp, um, where everybody was ABC local on the record, that was my solo joint to the world other than yeah. what I had did on the street corner. You know what I mean? Man, and, um, listen, man, I, I, yeah. I don't mean to cut you off, but like I remember when it was a time when the South didn't really get recognized by East or West Coast. It was underground uh, cassette tapes. You had the down South, yeah. uh, uh, the down South, uh, I think it was like a, uh, the, yeah, the down South, and they would do a CD with all the down South, uh, not a CD, a cassette with everybody on it from yeah. down South. And I used to get that cassette, yeah. man, and I put it in my deck. And, hey, it was a wrap. I didn't really after after the South got you know, and it wasn't lit nowhere else. But to me, I, that's all I listened to. Well, if yeah. it wasn't you guys, I would. I, it wasn't yeah, going so. in my deck. Period. That's what this platform about Southern hospitality, hey. man. Anytime I get this, that's why I wanted to yeah, do a so platform you know where we could give ourselves some recognition for the accomplishments we done had. Have you been recognized yeah, for so. how you do that there? Have you ever been recognized plaques? Uh, maybe fifty. Maybe 50 50 percent of it, you know. I say it's a lot of flack where I'm concerned. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I said that my first verse of the first, um, or the, um, I'm saying how you do that that single, but the boss of my word record is a record. Of, my very first record is called "Keep It Real" with the country Louisiana banjo swing. But I, you know, I, I spoke about remaining a mystery. Yeah, and I didn't know how um, significant that would be Power. at the time. So it's a 50-50 thing with me. Like, if you know me, you know me. If not, due to the backwards pictures, everybody is still not familiar with my face. You know what I mean? I'm going to call it a blessing before I call it a curse. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, allow, you know, me to be preserved in the game. Mm -hmm. In that sense, it, 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 it's a hit and miss kind of thing. Kind of like Rock Kim compared to L.L. at the time, where L.L. had the more commercial success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But underground, if you know anything about hip-hop, yeah, that's one of the guys you don't want to battle freestyle-wise or nothing. So I became just what I ate in the game. You know, who I studied the teachers yeah, I yeah, studied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let me ask so you I this. Did you, 
Did you? Yeah, it's a badge of honor. You thank you. Yeah, and it didn't mean to cut you off. But did you and did, how did you and when Master P uh, when y'all first linked up and he and he was doing this remix with you? Um, did did I, the song was already bubbling, you know, for him to even come to you? Um, so yes, did you when it start when when he came to you and it started to make ground and um, what was the next phase? Because you know when an artist takes off like that, it's got to be something yeah. to where you know okay. Where are we going from here? Because we got to do something else. What was what? And how do you think that went for you, man? Let me. I'll give you a true life story. I, I was a groundskeeper. You know, I hustled and did what I did in the street on the side, but I tried to keep me a day job. You know, I had kids. I was a father at seventeen, so you know, I had to stay up out wow. some form of money. Yeah, at an early age. Um, so I was working this job as a groundskeeper, one of my last jobs in life. Um. And we was working the ruckus. I, I worked the grounds keeping the daytime, pizza hut in the evening time. And yeah. The studio at 12 Grinding, in the morning. hustling. And it's so, a unique hustle. Yeah, I see it. But I'm over again. Yeah, sleep in the car type of thing. You know what I mean? So one day, you know, I'm carrying this um, wheelbarrow full of lamb rocks to fill up this ditch. And I felt extremely light. So okay. All my struck the things I've been through in life, I felt like I was all but lifted off the ground. Back then, and I know you could overstand what I'm finna say to yes, you, sir. I still had an inner link. I still had an inner link beeper. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so my manager partner, shout out to Paul Franklin. We called uh, Uncle Paul or the Carleone family. Mm -hmm. He gave me a call while I was at work and said, hey, bro, you want to go to California? I said, what you talking about? They broke and peeping, working on something, and probably Ruckers is interested in, in um, signing you as an artist. So I was always trying to keep my day job to something else better come along. So I go in the office at the end of the day and I explain to the people I work for, look, um, this weekend I'm flying out to California and, you know, I had this life dream of being this artist all my life. And if this works out, this might be the break I've been waiting for. Other than that, I'll be back to work Monday morning. Okay. I went to California and the rest was here. Man, that's a great story, man. But I can feel you on having kids early and stuff. I think that's a lot of brothers, man. We start out early. We just trying okay. to make a way, man. Uh, anybody man, else got a question? Life, man. You got a question? Money, Money oh, Moses, you got a question? Oh, yeah, I got a question. Okay, what you got? Like, when you went to California, who was the first uh, first uh, uh, artist that really shocked you? Like, you you, you in the room with them? Um, For me and Priority Ruckus, it was guys like Ant Banks. Ryan hey, Kyle, man, you talking now. Brother Man Tom. You know, all of us, JT, the bigger figure, and too short, ultimately. Yeah, yeah, um, the boy was doing it. On short, off and on. But short being an OG to us at the time, he gave me a lot of props and welcomed me to California and happened to be in priority one of the days I was there when Ann Banks was doing the sitting on something fat record. And he'll come down with the homie. He wasn't on priority, but short would be hanging around. And a few little times we shared, and he come to Baton Rouge the time another, and we became friends throughout life. But far as one of my greatest inspirations of hip hop, when you talk about favorite rapper, Too Short is one of those wow. guys. That's Short number three. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick that on number three. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Short. Yeah. See, this is the thing I recognize, E, that's like heavyweight fighters. You don't expect Mike Tyson to fight like Muhammad Ali, Jack Johnson, everybody got their time and error, and they their own time of reign, like a, what I told Doug and Fridge. Um, I say, y'all, the East Coast to us was like the Wall of Abydos in Egypt. All right. You got that, that whole line of king. Yeah. And for us, especially Southern, less educated and so on and so forth, we got the game from both sides. Lil J used to say, we the meat. The East Coast is the one bread slice, the West is another, and we the meat on the other point. Man, shout out to, uh, shout out to, to, shout out to Lil J. Absolutely. Salute, man. Yeah, Salute man, respect, man. man. I, yeah, I'm trying to link up with everybody, man, in the South, man. That, that's that's my ultimate goal is to, to get these people on this platform, man, and, to, you know, to bless yes, people, sir. man, and, and on, a, on a positive vibe for the South, man. Yes, and, and like I say, I know a lot of people, even on the East Coast, man, and just, I mean, you know, that's the main thing, just trying to make sure we keep it, you know, keep the thing on level playing field. You know what I'm talking about? So, <laughs> yeah. Teach one, man. Yes, sir. They all go together. Yep. Yeah, if we 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 can manage the set trip, it all go together, and everybody got like Drake said years ago, 
the South got something to say. Everybody got a right to voice their opinion. Everybody got something to bring to the table. Yeah. So get yourself prepared. Or uh, like Big and uh, Puffer talk about notorious music. Um, I say music, but movie. And hey, we can't change the world unless we change ourselves, man. So, you know, I get oh. myself together for approaching the thing and anybody else, man. Yeah. Um, so, let me. do you have an, Mm-mm. you don't have another question? Mm-mm. What about you? No? Okay, then I let me see if I got anything else before I let you go, young bleedy. Um, thing I would I, I would say, you know, if it was a young kid out there trying to get in the rap game, um, what would one of the things be? And we, I, I just want to make sure we get that in. One of the things that you would leave them with something that they could could to, could take from this, because that's what a lot of our entrepreneurship is coming from these days for our youngsters, and they, everybody want to rap, and 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 maybe something you could say may inspire somebody. So wrap it up for us in that way, man. Okay, man. You know, other than uh, God being my greatest inspiration, I would have to say my mother. You know, under our mother, under our father, but above that, you know, always honor and respect God to give you the vision, the dream, and the manifest whatever you're trying to make happen in life. I did a record in 2007 called Living. I went back to basic fundamentals and all that to say this. Sometimes in some cases, life is more important than before love. If you're not breathing, you can't do nothing. You can't hey. embrace nobody, keep them, do whatever. So you go back to living. You got to learn where life comes from. You know, um, I always use this reference. If you don't know where you come from, you don't know where you at. To know where you're going and def- definitely to take the game. So I always tell them young to stay prayed up. I still got a young on my name, so I'm the perfect bridge between the young and the old. Yeah, I see that. Right? I see that. I see that. Yeah. I, I try to keep that connected and make sure we understand both sides. You know, if you look at a mob fashion, it's gangsters you wanted to get. They say it's two sides to a mob family. I say it's three. The brain, the bronze, which is the muscle, and um, the heart that connects the brains and the muscle. Hey, so I man. try to say them take a heart on the in-between and tell them to learn supreme mathematics, man. A before B, one before the two, and the three. Now they just king, number one. Number two is wisdom as a woman. And number three is a child brings forth for understanding. Yeah, and we yeah. can get to the rest. So if you're in order with God, you could be so much. I was told you could be so much in order with God that he'll be in order with you. Amen. You know what I mean? Like unisense. Unisense is the word that, 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 we, that we commonly use. But that's the whole thing and everything else, man, coming from where we come from. I didn't grow up in Harvard and Yale, New York, or California to have the opportunities. I remember a time in the South. When other than D and D Ruckers and RCA and whoever was reaching, yeah. the first guys that come out of Louisiana on a national level was Tim Smooth and Big Mike to rap a lot Ruckers and bust down to Luke Skywalker. Hey, did you ever did you ever think that you you might sign the rap a lot at any time? Was he ever I mean, in, the whole, in the scope? Um, I'm glad you asked that. Like I say, my whole point given. Was that's the only two opportunities we had? It wasn't Uncle Luke in Miami. It was man, Uncle Jay, Jay Prince, man. Hey, listen, man. He he paved the way for a lot of people, man. And 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 I respect him the utmost, man. To be honest with you, because of the moves that's been made in the South and the respect that we get a lot of times, a lot of that we got to pay homage to him for making it happen. And of course, UGK. That everybody in the world love UGK. Scarface, yeah. the whole Scarface, Mo, hey, hey, Willie yeah. D. Uh, uh, crime mob to be kind of yeah yeah you know it's an infinite list not cutting you off e, but saying it to say this to have the heart to continue yeah it's yeah. like a double damn back when you being spit, spit on like pimp say sit down and all that and we not respected because we a different origin and we don't speak in a proper language and we got country slang Hey, hey, my boy say country time. rap tune. That's what that's what my boy said. Yes, sir. Man, yeah, shout out hey, shout out to uh, Pimp and Ken too, man. I know you be linking with oh, Pimp and Ken, man. Pimpin. I call him Uncle Pimpin, man. Um I just talked to um, you know, he sent me something every other day. And y'all tap into him, man. I got, I, I, I really like. I got a link with him because me and him got we got something to talk about, man. We I I'd have had some times with old Pimp and okay. Ken, man. So you gotta link yeah, us up. You gotta you link us up. I Tell him that I want to bring him on the show. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna give him a call and, and put y'all together yeah. personally. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, look, I want to um, signify that you know. Um, I think I sent you the clip. If I didn't, shame on. I, I know I sent it to you and Steve, if not both. But you know, he got the HHF thing going on, hip hop fraternity out there in Atlanta that they yeah. doing, man, for artists and and just building a whole plateau. He one of them guys that come from that game. 
retired from that game and he loved music so much. I didn't know how intertwined he was with music and um, due to what he was doing. He kept me and Pimp C at the end of the day, hand and glove. If I was living in Dallas and we was going to the Black Forest Theater, shout out to Erica Badu, Uncle Pimp is going to come and make sure he let me know UGK coming through there. So, yeah. you know, it's a lot of times he was trying to keep me and Pimp hands together. And like I say, unfortunately, about our brother demise. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm trying to debate on so Bobo out there with y'all too, For sure. man. When you say Bobo, no, well, we in, da- hey, we in Dallas, Texas, man. So, hey, we trying to put this platform man. together, Dallas, Texas style, man, where people have a platform they can come to and enjoy themselves and speak about different things, you know, that's going on in the city and other cities surrounding here. So, man, we appreciate you for coming yes, on the show, man. Uh, we appreciate you oh, spending man, the time with us, man. man. Boss bro. Talk 101. Hey man, we hey we gonna get you yeah. back on here if you if, if once we get rolling good, we're a new establishment man. So once we put that hey once we put our foot in the game, you coming back right? For sure. Uh, look man, you stuck with me, man. You been stuck with me for a long time. You just ain't know. <laughs> but, uh, it's a time, time, man. So definitely, anytime, anything y'all need from me. And after the album, for sure, man, I, I love to get uh, y'all. Definitely, I, I want I want to try to recognize you on on the show as well, man. As far as on, uh, we've been doing yes, plaques, sir. man, and giving out different things. And I'm trying to bless everybody to come okay, on this show, too. bro. So well, I'm gonna probably call you back and try to I do some arrangement know, with you, man. May not, maybe even try to get you down to Dallas, man. Okay. All right, appreciate That's you. Um, I'm working on it, man. And if I pop up anytime soon, you will have a heads up. But yeah, keep me in the family, love one, and likewise all the time. All right, here. man. Yes, Thank you so much for joining us, man. It's Boss Talk 101, man. It's a unique hustle, man. We out. Yes, sir. Oh.